Dr. James Andrews is the founding partner medical director for the Andrews Institute in Gulf Breeze, Florida. He's been recognized internationally with uh, contributions in knee, shoulder, elbow injuries, uh, orthopedic surgeon, team physician for the Redskins, Auburn University, also on University of Alabama's medical staff as a consultant. Uh, Doctor, uh, thanks for joining us on short notice. We appreciate it. Oh, it's great. My pleasure to be here. Give me the athlete, if he calls right now, that you would have to hang up the phone on me. <laughs> what? Uh, depends on what kind of trouble they were in. <laughs> but <laughs> I'm, I'm constantly switching from from telephone to telephone with, with taking calls. So, you know, one of my big deals in sports medicine is, is availability. Answer the telephone. Well, I wanted to have you on. I know that uh, you did Drew Brees' shoulder surgery years ago when he got hurt, but quarterbacks in general, when it comes to these surgeries, you got Andrew Luck, who you did not operate on, and Cam Newton, who I don't believe you operated on either. They're coming back from torn labrum and I think rotator cuff. It it feels like the shoulder is still something that we're not quite sure what what you're going to get when you have that surgery, where it feels like we perfected the knee surgery. You do elbows, knees, and shoulders. Which one's the toughest one to handicap of how somebody will come out of it? Well, when I walk in a room and see an overhead throwing athlete, and if it's his elbow, I'm relieved. If it's the shoulder, I'm worried. So we still have a long ways to go with the throwing shoulder relative to having to operate on them and and get them well. And the, the healing response and how long it takes them to come back is like the rainbow. It's all over the place. So the, the big thing about the shoulders, you can't rush them. But you go back to what Drew Brees had. Um, why was he, and it feels like he's even better than he was prior to the surgery. Why is that? Because he's Drew Brees, I'm telling you. <laughs> probably <laughs> probably uh, the two, two things that, that take, should take credit for his success is, one, his normal ability and his motivation and work ethics and the physical therapist, Kevin Wilk, that did his rehab in Birmingham, uh, what I did, well, I was just along for the ride, if you want to know the truth. Drew stayed in Birmingham for, for like four months, working out twice a day, almost day, all day long, doing rehab with Kevin Wilk. And that's really why he got back. If you look at uh, a torn labrum or you're going to repair the rotator, uh, Andrew Luck has one, Cam Newton the other one. Which one? Uh, tell me the difference between those two as far as recovery time. Oh, it's about the same, but, you know, I really don't have a – I don't know either one of those players, so I'm really – ethically, I'm really not able to to respond about how long it's going to take them to get back. It wouldn't be fair to them nor to their team. But, it, you know, it varies as to how quick they can recover, but it's not it's not weeks. It's it's months, and sometimes it's, it's into the season, so you just don't know. Uh, and the main thing, as I said earlier, is you can't rush them, and you got to let them have time to mature the shoulder and get over the surgery, and and hopefully, what it was a minor situation where they can get back and play this season. Which one? But I have no idea otherwise. Which one's worse, though, torn labrum or a rotator? The For... rotator cuff is the granddaddy of shoulder injuries. Now, the one that has probably the worst connotation that you hear about is the labrum. And we have a hard time figuring out what to do with the labrum. Whether well, should we clean it up? Should we repair it? Should we ignore it? But a lot of throwers have labral pathology without symptoms, and so you have to really be careful how you read that. The knee surgery now, as opposed to 20 years from now or 20 years ago, like where where are we, and what do you what do you think is going to happen with knee surgeries? Well, the thing with knee surgeries is uh, we've, we've come a long, long ways with, with knee surgery. And the thing that revolutionized knee surgery, of course, was the arthroscope. The problem we're having with knee surgeries now, knee injuries, particularly in the NFL, is the wear patterns we, we're getting on the articular cartilage surfaces, which is an overuse wear pattern they get from from years of playing football. and. That's the big problem now is, is trying to figure out how do we fix these cartilage, so-called cartilage lesions in the weight-bearing surfaces of the knee joint. You know, the ACL is still a, a problem, obviously, but we're, we're pretty consistent with getting ACLs back. 
We're not 100%, though. Uh, the problem with ACL surgeries is eight, nine, ten years later, most of them have developed some arthritic change uh, related back to the injury. So it's not something that you like to have, but it, it, it can't be a problem as with wear patterns even when you've done a successful ACL reconstruction. Do you think so, that you know it's always something that we have to worry about in in, a, in the knee, uh, but we've come a lot further in the knee than we have in the shoulder or even the elbow. Do you think there will be a preemptive surgery for athletes in the future? Preventative? Not that I know of. I, my my rule is is there's not anything we can make better with surgery better than the good Lord made it. So uh, I, I doubt that that's ever going to come to pass. The big problem, the big thing is, is trying to figure out how do we prevent the injuries to begin with, with just basic rule changes and, and preventative exercises and not play in one sport and specializing in a sport 12 months out of the year. Where do you stand on uh, little leaguers in, you know, how they throw, uh, how often they throw? Because you, I'm sure, have seen a lot of these elbow injuries, and you've seen them with now younger and younger children. So a lot of parents listening to this program, is there some kind of words of advice from, you know, one of the great surgeons in history that could help us? Well, that's certainly a problem that I see daily. I, I, I did three Tommy Johns yesterday on uh, either freshman in college or, or our, our young high school players. And this morning I've been seeing new patients. Wow. And so far I've had three rooms I've been to seeing new patients. They're all 15, 16, 17 years of age that are playing year-round baseball and have, have injured their Tommy John's ligament. So the big thing for parents is they anybody doing an overhead throwing sport should have at least two months off, preferably three to four months off, each year when they're not doing an overhead sport, which means they shouldn't specialize and play 12 months out of the year. Uh, Dan, one thing that I can tell them, if, they, if they're if they playing and they're playing with fatigue in youth baseball, meaning vet fatigue, seasonal fatigue, or year-round fatigue, if they're doing that, there's a 36 to 1 times. That's a 3,600% increased chance of injuring their shoulder or their elbow playing youth baseball. So fatigue is the thing we have to prevent. And so how do we do that? That's the big question. I know you're busy. I always appreciate your time. And thank you, doctor. We appreciate you, uh, and especially with that piece of advice there for uh, parents of, uh, of kids who are playing high school or youth baseball. Thank you, doctor. Well, well, thank you for getting the message out. And good luck to all these football players this year. Thank you, Doc. That's Dr. James Andrews, founding partner, medical director for the uh, Andrews Institute, Gulf Breeze, Florida. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience.